We're taking advantage of me having the weekend off and today we're going to the Field Museum. All right, we are here at the Field Museum. I'm super excited. The triathlon is going on today. So as we were walking here, we saw um, some of that. We actually had to cross a portion of it. Um, everyone looked really tired. It's super hot today. Yeah. So I really feel for those guys. <laughs> like it's really gonna be tough. Um, but so excited to be here. I can't wait to do, there's a couple of special exhibits I wanna do. Uh, the Deep Oceans exhibit. Um, also, uh, there's a Bloodsuckers. Yeah, I, um, I've been really excited to see the Unseen Oceans. Um, yes. I also wanna see like obviously things that we you know see every time or yeah. the other time we came here yeah. Sue and then like yeah. uh, maybe try not to spend so much time in the taxidermy <laughs> area yeah. as last year got stuck there for several um, hours last time I think that there's like an Egyptian thing I mean it's, it's excited to see what's new and what's yep. changed since the last time we were here yeah I think it actually has been since uh, before COVID that we were here I believe yeah it's I been can't a really while. remember it's definitely yeah. been before COVID yeah so super excited and uh, we'll take you along with us one of the things that's so great from Museum Campus is the view of the city from here. It's just so great because you get the lake, you get all of Lake Shore East, the full skyline. It's just really nice. And of course the Shedd Aquarium right over there. So, love that this is so close and accessible. All right, we are inside. We actually decided to go ahead and get a membership. Um, the we figured if we came here twice, it would pay for itself. Yeah. Um, so for the cost for like an Illinois resident um, to have like, it's like one adult and you get a, a person in free um, was great. So we decided to go ahead and do that today. Behind yeah. us is the taxidermy area where we got lost and spent hours and hours one time well, when we were about here. the um, membership, sorry. I, oh, I, sorry. It'll encourage us to come. I more think, often, a hundred percent. It's like, it's been like, we, we were just thinking it's been over six years since yeah. we've been here before. So it's like, yeah. We Obviously. did that in Cincinnati because we had a, a, a membership to the zoo and we went all the time because it's like once you have a membership you don't have to think about like oh we gotta like pay for tickets. Or like, like, there's a lot of Illinois free days or like Chicago mm -hmm. resident free days and like we're like oh we'll go in that and it's like we never do because we don't pay attention or I'm working during that so. Yeah or the, a lot of times they're like during the week in the middle of the day and yeah. so it's not really convenient so. Um, so super excited that we got the membership and it gets us into all of the extra ticketed events like like the Unseen Oceans, yeah. like the Bloodsuckers and there's an there's an insect one that looks kind of icky. I don't know about that one. We'll see. Um, but, <laughs> but first things first. Food. Food. We're hungry. Do you want to try? Uh, yes. Lots of food. Sounds really nice. Food gotten. Had a bit of a kerfuffle with um, communication. <laughs> there were some frustrated ladies behind the counter. But I was able to get an Italian beef on a gluten-free bun, which was really great. Um, Chris got a Chicago dog, we'll show you in a second. And we got these cool sodas that are like, that had the Film Museum la label on them. The soda sounded really good, I think, because we were so hot from the heat. Um, but we're in this really cool little room here, fueling up so we can have all of our energy to get through the museum. Italian beef with chips. And I also got some uh, grapes here. Grapes. And then you got your Chicago, Chicago dog. That's pretty good. Yeah. I don't like that it was sitting out on the under the heat link, but well. whatever. <laughs> um, cookie and you got some sun chips. What kind of soda did you get? You got the orange soda. Orange. Well, mine's a watermelon. Pretty good. We already said that we were not going to go into the taxidermy animal area, and we haven't even gone into any other exhibits, and we're already heading in there. <laughs> Chris can't help himself. <laughs> I want to see the nightmare. <laughs> That's not it? That's the boat, boat bill here. Oh man, so close. In all seriousness though, that area is really cool. And a lot of the exhibits in this space, like where the taxidermy animal area is, they're like a hundred years old. Like they've been here forever. So it's really, it is really interesting. So, um, but we got Chris out of there. We didn't find the night heron, but we're gonna head over to the ancient Americas. Parkland. So this is glacial ice here? Mm -hmm. And then this is, what is this? It says mixed parkland. And then what's this? Cool mixed forest. Okay. So these are like kind of more like plains, Prairie, I guess? Almost pre- Which makes sense. Pre-prairie. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And then, oh, that's quite different there. <laughs> you see that? This is like all prairie now. 
Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mixed pine has gone down. Yeah. And now there's this temperate. And there's no glacial ice up here. No, like it's boreal, yeah. boreal forest. Boreal forest. What's cool is that by the time they developed this, people had made it here. Oh, interesting. So they were made so at the same time, two made, different styles. They, two, they made up, like, yeah. Okay, like that's a, really interesting. So it's talking about the two different styles of kind of like spear points. There's the Clovis style and then yeah, this fishtail the style. Creating the, the Clovis there. So created at the same time but different regions. That is a mastodon tooth. That is like. Well, it's the jaw and the teeth. So it's huge. Like two and teeth. that's mammoth jaw and like teeth. That's incredible. Wild. I love these features that they have. They're like, please touch. So you know, like. discover which plant and animal products come from innovations in ancient America. So these are like kind of like effectively Cultiv hybrid plants like that were sort of cultivated and that's really cool. <clears throat> Cotton. That's cool. Okay, see that. Cotton. See what grass popped in the daily life. <laughs> Thank goodness for popcorn. So this section kind of takes you like chronologically. It starts sort of at the very early time of like the ice age and sort of walks you through, um, you know, up until I guess closer to closer to present day. Um, so kind of interesting. This is cool how they put the like carvings and stuff. That's really neat. So these are all pots. We've got like handles and spouts. That's interesting. Does it say what year? So this is an old kayak. Um, it's really pretty cool. There's some hunters in really old kayaks. They're pretty tough for that. No real blood on display in this exhibit, but they are gonna show things about blood. So I'm gonna give that trigger warning here. This is the Bloodsuckers exhibit. I'm not so sure about all these giant, like, creepy crawly thingies. <laughs> it's kind of gross. Like this one here is uh, a mosquito. Like, it's, ugh, really grosses me out being that big. <laughs> So this disgusting thing here is a leech, right? That's so gross. Oh my goodness. Oh, I really don't like the giant like grown up things. This says vampire fat, fat things are so sharp, they often don't feel them pierce the skin. I have heard that. And oftentimes they also don't leave leavings. Like you don't know that you've been bitten sometimes. Prehistoric blood feeders. Black fly. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and they're like. I mean, look how cute they kind of are, though. Like, look at that guy. He's just. He's just cute as can be. I wonder how they feed them in here. So this says that sea lampreys we were just looking at are not native to the Great Lakes. They entered from the Atlantic Oceans through shipping channel or canals, and um, they haven't changed much in 360 million years, which is kind of crazy. And they can get up to three feet long, which none of these guys I think are quite that long. They're about a foot and a half maybe. This is kind of a creepier portion of the exhibit. There's like heartworms there, like horse flies, <laughs> really like gross stuff. Horse. Ew, please. Oh. Oh my goodness gracious. Ew. Ew, 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 ew. Uh, I did not know that vampire moths were a thing. Like, they're moths that bite? Oh, ticks. Yeah, the worst. As a pet owner, so many of these are like such a problem. Yeah, that, uh, we saw that over there. They were talking about a bird that was um, like blood eating birds or blood sucking birds. It's crazy. Okay, so there's this room you can sit in. 
and it just sounds like buzzing flies all around you. And it's kind of creepy and weird. <laughs> oh, mosquitoes. Okay, that's it's like. I, probably the camera's probably not picking it up. It's crazy. This is the truth about vampires, but this is like like the actual like vampire bats. Well, it says that the sewing green is a world of many Oh, oh, right. <laughs> like vampire bats and vampire snails. Vampires are going to be superstition and lack of knowledge. Today, the changing ideas about vampires is precisely why they persist. Our belief in them adapts with the times. It's the timeline of vampires, like... Yeah. That's what they were just showing over there, like the different methods of yeah, preventing a vampire. It's so a, crazy. You know, which is kind of an old practice for treatment, but it does mention that um, sometimes it's used to stimulate blood after surgery. Kind of gross. Barbershop full? Yeah, like the iconic red and white thing. It's originated from bloodletting. Ew. It's red and white because it's blood and bandages. <laughs> gross. And that's gross. They would put the pole out there, and it also resembles the the uh, rod they would grasp to locate a vein. Very interesting. Yeah, so How did they get it connected to barbers? Because it was barber, it says barber surgeons. Oh, so it's like it was a connected the two. Very Sweeney tie. <laughs> yeah. And so then they put the barber's pole to mark it as a marker for bloodletting services. So this says that by the 1700s, prominent barber surgeons were elevated to be like basically kind of physicians at the time, I suppose. Very interesting. It's super interesting that it came from barbers. So now we're into diseases transmitted by blood. It's like Lyme disease, malaria, West Nile virus. Zika virus. So there's a little gift shop for the blood suckers. <laughs> oh, ooh, that's a nice copy of that book. We technically already have that book, but it's a really old copy. Um, I don't know why you would want this, but apparently you can get a black fly plushie. Right. This is one of those, <laughs> uh, oh, one of those like book, book, purses. book purse things. Yeah, that's, that's really, really cool. fun. Okay, so the little stuffed um, black fly comes with a little malaria and a little dengue fever. <laughs> I can't even like hold it. It's like, <laughs> oh, that's so weird. <laughs> I guess you zip them up inside. Yeah, it's really like, cute. <laughs> it's really cute. I hate ticks so much. This is a little so red cute. blood cell, <laughs> and then a white blood cell. Oh goodness. Okay, yeah, go ahead and check your tea. So cute. Um, and then Chris pointed out the um, stuff bleach. I don't know why you'd want that. It's a little sucker. It's <laughs> so gross. Take this dude. He's like way more. Uh -huh. yeah. Is this what this says here? Yeah, so like it says some plankton are baby animals, so you can like press it and it shows you. So this is the adult whelk here, and then that's the baby whelk. That is life size, like it's literally that big. Look at that one. No, this one. This. Oh my gosh. That's, oh my gosh, it's so tiny. Look at this one. I didn't think it's bigger than this one. 11 feet. Oh my word. No, oh, you can't even see that, it's so tiny. 11 feet, that is insane. Into small separate schools that then form a large layer. As a scientist. Oh, wow. <laughs> that is so cool. Okay, so 
all of these are bioluminescent types of fish. Or they're like, maybe they underneath the I feel like the camera's not picking up all the colors, but because it feels it seems more colorful, but it's really cool. That's a stonefish. Yeah, I think you're right. Okay. Yeah, that's its eyes. And then it's its mouth. Yeah. We'll see where it is. Aww. Oh, look at this little guy. It's called pipefish. Little seahorses. Oh my goodness, how cute are you? <laughs> this is like a historical timeline of kind of being able to explore the ocean deeps because it was obviously originally limited to how far an actual individual could go. Um, and then of course talking about today we have, you know, submersives. So you can kind of go through like the original sort of type of submersible vessels that they used. Interesting. This is, um, I think, the type that found the Titanic. That's what I'm saying there. Very interesting. We saw some of these in the Titanic exhibit, but um, basically, like people who will go down in submersibles or submersives will um, put a styrofoam cup outside, and the pressure will like take it down to these like teeny tiny little sizes here. The oh, this is the, this is the Arctic Bob. The red one's the Gulf Stream. Right? That's what that says. Warm, shallower. And this one's like on the bottom. So this is talking about like how the currents keep the life of the ocean going because without it, like it wouldn't mix the waters appropriately and different animals wouldn't yeah, be able get, to survive. They get photosynthesis, but then they collect nutrients from the deaths. Yeah. That's really cool. Oh, I see. So if you build it high enough. Oh, that's crazy. Oh, yeah, look. Getting it high enough that it's going to turn screen. See? This is very satisfying. I can play with this all day. That, that's insanity, like, like, that's the top of the ocean. That's the top of Mount Everest if it was underwater, and that's the Mariana Trench. That is absolutely crazy. It's actually the same one, but it's the other side is the oceans from the blood sucker. How much is it? I don't know, but 80, I have to have it. Bucks? Look at it. Don't you have it? I bet you that's two, $200. Oh. 
The jelly cat dogs at Cranboro? 130. Yeah, the, the jelly cat bur uh, dogs at Cranboro were like 80, uh, $40. <laughs> oh my like god, I want one. it so much. The little There's one's 40. One. No, but the little one's not as squishy. I want to like sleep with this. <laughs> yeah. funny. Let's pick up the, the whale. I want to see the whale. Is it is soft? It's soft like one of those blankets. <laughs> is it the bottom or is that the top? That's the, that's, the, that's the bottom. Oh, whoops. <laughs> I'm upside down. Oh my gosh. The whale and the octopus. How much is that one? 100. 100. A little ray. Oh my goodness. I love all of these things. And the little eels. Look at the eels. <laughs> oh, they're cute because they're like... You can bend them. These are fun. I'm putting that octopus on my Christmas list. Look at the squid. This is Stanley Field, the president and chairman of the board between 1909 and 1964. It's so beautiful in this building. I just can't get over the building itself. It's so lovely. The pterodactyl even better come up here. And these are terrifying. Look how giant that is. Oh, gee. Oh yeah, because there's like numerous rows. Strongest bite in the ocean? The fastest strongest bite in the ocean. What kind of fish is this? Placiderm fish. Armored head. It's a cast. They stretch up to 23, or excuse me, 20 feet long. Crazy. We reach mass extinction number two. Moving continents lead to mass die off. Okay. Mm. Yeah, by the end of the Devonian period, continents had moved over the South Pole because the poles here around cold climates. Now, fall accumulated on the continents forming glaciers. Uh, no, sir. No, sir. That's gross. Mass extinction number three, life is nearly wiped out forever. So after the third mass extinction, there's the Triassic, Jurassic, and Cretaceous periods. And now we're into the dinosaurs. Already at mass extinction number four, but this is the one that gave dinosaurs their chance. So. so it says this mass extinction ended the Triassic period, happened in waves over millions of years. So that's interesting. In the first waves, many reptiles and other uh, tetrapods went extinct. Later waves devastated marine animals and land and plants. The Stegosaurus here. So this is a Triceratops here. But it's really cool because they show kind of all the different skulls of the types of dinosaurs that had these sort of like, you know, um, skull, they call it like, frills, <laughs> basically extra pieces. Kind of cool. 
pretty massive. We're gonna go see Sue. <laughs> So this is Sue's real skull. So it's like a recreation on the actual um, kind of put together piece. Um, this is so they can keep it for studying. So they have it here. So a little history of Sue. She is the largest and most complete T-Rex ever found. Since the specimen arrived at the Field Museum in 1997, scientists from around the world have come to study her. Um, and thanks to Sue, we now know more about T-Rex than ever before. This is crazy, Chris. This is like a you know a rib, but it's broken and rehealed. Yeah, kind of crazy. So it's just got a few spots like this. to number five 66 million years ago and asteroid about the size of Manhattan crashed into the earth. This is the ice age here. Okay. No way that's a real size. I remember this from the last time we were here, and I was like, I think sloths are the cutest thing in the world, but a giant one sounds terrifying. <laughs> giant round sloth. Is that showing the glacial coverage? Mm -hmm. Go up here and see it better. It's crazy. So this is interesting. It says an ice age is simply a long time, thousands or millions of years ago, when conditions are cold enough that large masses of ice form and stay on the planet. So it's not necessarily just a long, lifeless, frozen age, which is kind of what I always picture in my brain. This guy, an Irish deer, the largest deer of all time. It looks more like a moose. This is a mammoth here. This is a mastodon. They're the leaf eating cousin to mammoths. We are at today and also mass extinction number six, which is human caused mass extinction. Is that that pterosaur thing? It's so terrifying. <laughs> it's not so terrifying as a plushie, but when, when it's way above you, it's horrifying. Is that Sue? <laughs> this is a T-Rex tooth and a plushie. And then you can get a, a Velociraptor claw. <laughs> it's so cute. I always get me with the stuffed animals. I found perfect shirt. Love that. The Chicago, um, what is that? How do you say that? Archipteryx. Archipteryx. So the Field Museum's stuffed animal game is on point. Like they have got it down. Like look at this little plant guy. Oh my goodness. Like, well, what's that one? It's fossils. Oh my god. You know, like did the tooth and the skull and like a... I love it so much. This is their poop. <laughs> it's funny. Okay. We're heading into the underground adventure where I'm assuming there's gonna be lots and lots of bugs. Um, Chris is pretty excited and I'm like, I don't know, we'll see. Getting shrunk down so to we're, their size really lets you we're shrinking down to the bug size. This is his helpful hints for shrinking. That's cute, do not run. <laughs> That's so funny. Right? 
Boy, was I surprised. Which really After I got through the it does feel like, I was yeah, because like we're going on a Disney ride. My assistant snapped. Oh, we're, we're, in, we're entering the shrink chamber. That's fun. Like, like, oh, that's cool. Yeah, they're like getting smaller. Chris, go on in. <laughs> hey, it's getting smaller. Oh! Oh, it feels weird. <laughs> oh, I'll have a field view just over an inch tall. Okay, so we're like less than an inch tall now. Oh gosh, there's a penny for size reference. <laughs> this is very clever. So these are micro bugs who, even though we're only like an inch tall, they are still quite a bit smaller. And this is nice, these, these show your depth below the surface. So we're about two and a half inches below the surface. Oh, that's wild. Wow, that's crazy. This is, um, this is cool. Look how big that earthworm is. And the snail. Or is that actually like a centipede before it comes out? It is a snail. It's like an egg sack, I guess? Ew, 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 ew. Look at it's like a little pill bug. Looks super creepy though when it's that big. And I'm getting a little bit creepy. Like the heebie jeebies a little. <laughs> What's this guy? <laughs> What's a grub? <laughs> so, in case you get creeped out while you're in this section, <laughs> I found um, a sign here that um, gives you an emergency exit, so you can leave. It tells you how to get out in case you are afraid. Um, otherwise, you can stay in. Okay, so we're in here with this like mole tracking thing, and then I looked up and I was like, "What is that?" It's you said it's a mole cricket. Mole cricket with front feet shaped like shovels. Mole crickets are first-rate diggers. They breaststroke their way through the soil, making long, winding tunnels. Woo! That's crazy. Okay. Hmm. I don't know about that guy. He's like animatronic. That's kind of cool. Yeah, this guy's real creepy. Oh god. Oh, oh, fuck. oh my god. That's scary. <laughs> <laughs> Did not know oh it was going to do that. Oh my god. That's hilarious. Are these going to move too? No. No, I'm terrified. You can get in. No, I'm not getting in that. No, thank you. No, you know, these are. They're cicadas. Oh! Ew. I think they are. I hate cicadas. They do. Well, they look like the cicada. Uh, Shell. Exoskeleton from, yeah, a 10 year old cicada. Gross. Grody, grody, grody. Yeah, it's open because they climb out. That's what it is. Yeah, that's what they're doing right there. Super. Icky, icky. Holy crap, that's huge. That's a crawfish. Oh my goodness. I, didn't, I guess I didn't realize that they were underwater or underground. Like, I guess they are. This is down into the water table. Oh, okay, that makes sense. It's looking for water. Okay, the, the crawfish breathe through gills and they get oxygen. They must um, bathe their gills in water. That's interesting, okay. So they, they burrow down under the water table. Interesting. Another silly thing they have in this section is a vending machine where you can purchase, I guess these are critters for food. Yeah. Um, really gross, <laughs> really weird, food. but a lot of fun. <laughs> it's what you would eat. Oh, it's what we would eat if we no, were no. critters. Yeah, if you were yeah. this. Okay. That's what those eat. <laughs> like animal droppings, fungus eats animal droppings, beetle, grub eats live plants, brewing beetle eats dead animals. This feels a little bit like She Loves Lair. Yeah. Waiting for a spider to jump out at us any moment. What is that? What does it say? Mm. This is the decomposition. 
Okay, ah, uh, okay, okay, okay. Larger animals eating like a mole. Oh, oh, we were supposed to spot moles. You told us to do that. Oh, did it? That's one of our tasks to find moles. We found one. There's ants. Ants at work. I love that you Oh, I love the ants. Oh, ants don't creep me out at all. I think they're so cute. There's the spider. Oh, oh, it's, it's animatronic. <laughs> He's, he's just eating a grub. Everything's fine. He's not gonna jump out at you. <laughs> That's fun. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think all that's like fungus. Yeah. Very interesting. This is way cooler than I thought it was gonna be, for sure. Oh! What? <laughs> His little paw. Little came out. <laughs> little spider guy. All right, so I guess I guess we just enlarge when we exit. We walk through this. <laughs> okay, we found a NASCAR street race thing, so Chris is gonna race the street race. Okay, it's really hard. <laughs> I was gonna say you're not doing real good. It's really hard. I mean, it has been, in fairness, like at least a year since you've driven a real car, so. Oh, look. Yeah, I don't even remember what buttons are which. <laughs> I mean, uh, pedals are which. Oh, oh, oh. Just like, just like the end. Just like the driver. Alright, and we're at the gift shop, the main gift shop for the museum. This gift store is huge. It goes on quite a ways, and they have so much stuff. All right, we finished the few museums. What do you think? It was amazing. Yeah. Yeah, I really enjoyed it. I um, there was three visit like visiting exhibits that we got to go to. We prioritize those obviously because they're not here all the time. And now that we have the membership, we'll be able to come back and see the other stuff. Um, I actually thought, which one was your favorite? I like the underground. I agree. I think the under. It was funny because I didn't even want to do that one, and then I actually ended up thinking that was the coolest of yeah, all of them. It was, it was definitely most more immersive. immersive, yeah. And like the yeah. whole like animatronic things was so unexpected. It was cool because it like yeah, you felt like you were. The premise was that you were shrunk down and you were going through the soil, so it was like yeah. kind that of one cool. Was it so felt cool. like a ride. Yeah. Like I was expecting like a ride to be at the end of the like queue. Like yes. that's what it felt like a queue for a ride at Disney or something. It was yes. fun. Yeah, I agree. And then of the deep oceans one or the um unseen, unseen oceans. oceans, the the video where you got like the manta rays yeah. and the whales and um that was I loved it. I yeah. could have sat in there and watched that like on loop over and over again. That was really cool. They also had the kinetic sand and I could have stayed there for hours. <laughs> that was yeah. So it's fun. To buy some. Yeah, yeah, I definitely want to buy some of that. Um, and I, I'm amazed by the gift shops. I mean, because they had like out, outside of each of the visiting exhibits, and of course outside of Sioux, there's a gift shop kind of with that type of stuff that's you know specific to that exhibit, um, which is really cool. And I think they're neat gift shops. But the the main gift shop, um, first of all, was huge, and I felt like whoever buys for them is. Yeah. so good because all of the stuff was so nice in there so it was really great so yeah i loved it I had a yeah, great time had a great time glad that we're members now because we definitely yes. come back yeah and uh, now that it, you don't feel so like I don't know, it feels more accessible when it's like well, oh we don't have to pay for anything it's, it's free we <laughs> talked about this so much when we were members for the cincinnati zoo it's like you you, you don't feel bad for going for just a little bit yeah. like you don't feel like you have to like make a whole day or an event out of it because you can just go and come come and go as you please yeah i think that's the difference because you feel like i was like if there's a traveling um exhibit that's coming that we want to go to um we could literally just come for that and not do anything else yeah. and you wouldn't have the guilt of like oh god we paid 70 dollars or whatever to be here and so i um, really glad we did that yeah. yeah so thanks for coming along with us i hope you enjoyed it um if you like this video give it a thumbs up and make sure to subscribe we'll see you next time